Hello there. I am Adrian Atkinson. Thank you for joining us for another educational edition of Jamaica Magazine. Coming up in the show today, minding your social graces as you party this festive season. But before that, a look at how the government is positioning the country to become a major medical tourism destination. Plus, safety tips when using the north-south leg of Highway 2000. Stay tuned. <music> Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, December 21. The Ministry of Health has launched a pilot project to speed up the time it takes to fill prescriptions issued to persons at public hospitals and clinics. The Ministry, through the National Health Fund, is partnering with private pharmacies to implement the Public Sector Pharmacy Partner Program. It is aimed at reducing the wait time encountered by persons using NHF-operated drug serve pharmacies. Quality health care has to be timely. Um, when a person is sick or is ill and they require attention, uh, long waits can affect their healing process and indeed can stymie that healing process. The health minister signed an agreement to formalize the arrangement during a function at the Health First Pharmacy in Maypen, Clarendon. It's among five participating pharmacies in Maypen and nine in Kingston in which the program will be rolled out over the next three months. The Public Sector Pharmacy Partner Program gives individuals the option to fill their prescriptions at NHF-operated drug serve facilities or at participating private pharmacies. Persons accessing the program must have a GOJ or NHF health card and will be asked to pay $200 to offset administrative costs at the participating pharmacies. The Justice Ministry's efforts to increase its efficiency have been enhanced with the donation of 14 high-density photocopier machines. The photocopiers, which are worth over $33 million, will be placed at parish courts across the island. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck says they will be used to ensure committal proceedings are activated in a speedy manner. These photocopiers that have been provided will be the main workstations to ensure that the papers, the dockets, are ready when they get to circuit. We hope that they will be maintained and be regularly serviced at least over three months so we can get years of service. The photocopiers were provided by the International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Department of the U.S. Embassy on Tuesday. While expressing thanks for the photocopiers, Minister Chuck says he will continue to push for the courts to go paperless. Government has finalized an air services agreement with Canada to increase flights from secondary and tertiary airports in that country and improve security measures. The agreement was signed yesterday between Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, and Canada's High Commissioner to Jamaica, Sylvain Fabi. In the context of the signing of this agreement with Canada, it is also important to note that the steps being taken to strengthen the connectivity between our destinations are complementary building blocks for an already vibrant and mutually reinforcing bilateral relationship. The Air Services Agreement recognizes the importance of international air transportation in promoting trade, tourism and improved services for travelers. In the meantime, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says government has been successfully reversing a three-year trend of reduced visitor arrivals from Canada. He was addressing yesterday's signing of the Air Services Agreement between Jamaica and Canada. The minister reveals that in April, visitor arrivals from Canada was down 11%, but says that trend is being reversed following discussions with Canadian officials about a new growth strategy. I'm pleased to advise you that um, we are now down only 6% and we've had the first three months of positive growth continuously, September, October and November. We have increased our airlift capabilities by 10,000 additional seats for this winter. And that will bring us somewhere in the region of 292,000 seats out of Canada for this winter alone. And that by itself will ensure a 4% increase 
in arrivals from the destination. And finally, Minister of State in the Finance Ministry, Fable Williams, is calling on large companies to collaborate with smaller ones to move Jamaica forward. As you look around, there are many small, medium-sized companies that are in need of larger partners to take them to the next step. And so we celebrate that for Jamaica producers and would encourage you to continue to look as you expand your portfolio with different products. She was speaking at the recent opening of Tortuga Rum Cake Factory's Tortuga House on Retirement Crescent in Kingston. A 3.5 million US dollar investment, the factory is a partnership between Tortuga International Holdings and Jamaica producers. This is more than a signal of private sector confidence in our capital as a production hub, despite the many uh, challenges which our city faces. But especially for the rebirth of Kingston as a pride of place to live, work, raise families, and do business. After all, Kingston is an integral part of the roadmap which will bring sustainable development, growth, and prosperity to our country. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Let's celebrate Jamaica to the world. Fastest man in the world. First Jamaican woman to win gold in Olympic 100 meter sprint. An upcoming global superstar. Mouth watering meals. And a vibrant set of people. We are Jamaicans. Let's get together and bring back the love. Persons in the medical and tourism sectors want visitors to come to Jamaica to get medical treatment, and the government has laid down the groundwork to ensure that this can happen. Take a look. What we are looking at is a framework that will establish Jamaica as a medical tourism destination, including how do we work with a JTB to ensure that Jamaica starts being marketed as a medical tourism destination. The opportunity we see is in a range of different treatments, surgical treatment, medical diagnostics, dentistry. That is actually already happening. I'm sure the dentists among you will already be seeing patients from the diaspora who come down here and while they're visiting friends and family decide to have um, dental treatment and that is certainly one of the low-hanging fruit. Big abroad in sports, music, food. And the newest kid on the block that has the world looking to jam down is medical tourism. Essentially moving people, and typically it's from more developed countries to less developed countries, to access health care at an affordable cost, but still high in quality which is really about people actively traveling to another country to seek medical help or medical treatments. Now, it's not so much about um, people coming here and while they're here having a treatment. It's really about the whole structure of um, a travel industry that is set up to promote people traveling overseas. So if you want to have a hip replacement, you actually go to a travel agent in the US usually, or in the UK or Canada, wherever, and you say, where can I have my hip replacement done? And they'll give you a list of five or six countries and say, okay, this is what it costs in these countries. So there's a whole superstructure that's set up to promote this. The government has implemented a number of policies to spur growth in this sector. The National Steering Committee on Health and Wellness Tourism, with its secretary at Vista, Jampro, looks at accreditation, regulation, and a marketing framework for the sector. The National Standard for SPAs was developed in conjunction with the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. There is a national quality infrastructure. And the Fiscal Incentives Act, a new fiscal framework introduced in 2014, provides for reduced customs and stamp duties and corporate income tax rates, as well as a list of items that can be brought into the island duty-free. These incentives are available to both recovery hotels and medical and wellness facilities. Global investors have seen the potential for medical tourism in Jamaica. International brand Hospiten built a $2.3 billion state-of-the-art facility in Montego Bay, St. James. Additionally, it's quite the norm to hear of medical missions happening in different parts of the island. 
the country has been ranked second on the list of most attractive countries for medical tourism based on a 2014 index. So why Jamaica? We already have an international and global presence as a tourism destination. We do have a skilled workforce, excellent doctors, excellent dentists, excellent nurses. Our global costs here are lower, significantly lower. The proximity to the United States cannot be ignored, and that's a given. Of course, we have our natural resources. So when we talk about wellness, tourism, our beaches, our spas that can be developed, advantages, of course, for a place like Jamaica to get engaged in health tourism, definitely good for the workforce and, of course, of the foreign exchange. <laughs> The government will continue to promote and facilitate investment in the very lucrative medical tourism sector. Therefore, health professionals and tourism stakeholders form coalitions to help develop Jamaica as a medical tourism destination. For more on Jamaica's growing medical tourism industry, contact Jampro. They're based on Trafalgar Road in New Kingston. Call them at 978-7755 or 978-3337. Each time you're not paying full attention to the road environment, the greater your chances of getting in a crash like that. Plan routes to avoid focusing on GPS systems, prevent children from roaming in motor vehicles, turn down the volume of car stereo systems, pull off the roadway if you have to use mobile devices, do not read, watch television or eat while driving, avoid multitasking and keep conversations with other passengers to a minimum. Whether you walk, ride or drive, avoid potentially fatal distractions. Traveling this holiday may see you using Highway 2000 to guarantee that you reach your destination not only quickly but safely. Here are a few tips for using the north-south link of the roadway. If you're a regular traveler to the north coast, you would know about getting stuck on Mount Russell Hill and waiting hours upon hours to bypass trucks that move at snail speed. The narrow, winding and sometimes treacherous journey up the steep incline has been off-putting for many persons who desire to move from one end of the island to the next. But now there's a better way to travel, the Mount Russell Bypass. The Mount Russell Bypass section is part of the, what we call our North-South Highway, which will link the south coast of Jamaica all the way through to the north coast of Jamaica. This highway will change the way Jamaicans, where Jamaicans choose to live and where they choose to work. It will also significantly impact the tourism industry by providing opportunities for our visitors who now just come into the north coast to be able to see the rest of Jamaica. The 19.3 kilometers Mount Rossa section, which traverses some of the steepest terrain in Jamaica, has already seen Jamaicans covering what has at times been a two-hour journey in less than 15 minutes. However, there are a number of new safety features which have been included in the design to ensure that you make the best use of the thoroughfare. One of the many safety features of the Mount Rossa bypass section of the highway is providing guidance to heavy vehicles which are going down the hill. The sign which is located at the top of the, the long decline going down to Limstead provides truckers, especially truckers, with some maximum speed that they are able to safely traverse the hill. The highway features two southbound lanes and three northbound lanes with the extra lane being a truck or climbing lane. This auxiliary lane allows slower vehicles ascending the steep grade to keep left while permitting other faster vehicles to pass without slowing down. Motorists capable of maintaining the 80 km per hour speed limit can proceed in the central lane, whereas vehicles operating below this speed limit, such as the loaded trucks, are encouraged to keep to the extreme left lane. 
throughout mm -hmm. Jamaica we've had problems with trucks which lose braking and then end up um, with disastrous consequences. So on Mount Rasta we have special features where if a truck loses its brake, then it can go off into these what we call arrestor beds. Arrestor beds or emergency escape ramps enable vehicles that are having braking problems to stop safely. The facility has been designed to accommodate vehicles as large as tractor trailers. A lay-by has been provided for motorists traveling southbound at the start of the 8% slope. This allows motorists somewhere to pull over and make precautionary checks to ensure that the vehicle's brakes are okay and or that the load they are carrying is secure. These trips have been installed as a road safety feature to alert motorists that there are potential hazards ahead such as bends and emergency ramps. The strips cause a vibration and an audible rumbling transmitted through the wheels and into the vehicle's interior. They are also utilized on approach to the toll plaza to encourage motorists to reduce their speed. Motorists should not proceed through heavy smoke on the highway. Stop and pull over onto the verge and call the toll emergency number for assistance. Once the report has been lodged, a patrol vehicle will be dispatched. Motorists are required to follow the instructions of the patrol officer. When proceeding through fog, motorists should reduce their speed to the point that they are able to travel safely, stay in the left lane and put on their hazard lights. Motorists are being encouraged to be prepared when traveling the Mount Rosa Bypass and any thoroughfare across the island for that matter. Once the do's are practiced, the driving experience should be a pleasant one. To find out more about the work being done under the Highway 2000 banner, contact NROC at 929-1581 or visit their website h2kjamaica.com. Time is money. Easy driver. Well, no minimum must money and taxi driver drive so bad. Why him have to drive so hard? Me not gonna make a kill off me and me picnic them. One stop driver. Make a come off this bus. Me say stop. <laughs> me coming with you. The rest of not take chance when in your life. And look what we want, the money. Passengers, your safety is in your hands. Say one stop driver and get off if the driver is speeding, overtaking recklessly, and not obeying the rules of the road. Don't give away your life. It is life is all about making decisions. Choosing from a number of options to do a particular thing, which may result in a specific outcome. It can be difficult, but there are four things you can do to help make that decision. Stop. Check out what's happening and remind yourself to think before acting. Think. Make sure you're aware of the choices, all the advantages and disadvantages. Then think about the consequences. Act. Choose the best option and do something about it. Review. Finally, review what you have done and determine if it was good or bad. That way, you'll be in a better position to make the next decision, whether big or simple. Tis the season to be jolly, but while you are enjoying the festivities at your office party, remember that you will need to face your co-workers after the party is over. Our next feature will show you how to enjoy yourself this holiday in a respectable manner. It's the holiday season and with it comes company parties. Common sense should dictate what not to do at a Christmas social. But unfortunately, when alcohol is involved, common sense seems to go right out the window. Whether you are the employee or attending one of these parties with someone who is, it is always best to know what should not be done at one of these functions. 
maintenance of decorum, proper decorum. We are ladies and therefore the most important thing is to behave like a lady at all times. Be aware of what you should and should not say. I think if you, what you mustn't do is be worried about the fact that you may not know. All you do is watch, you know, look at how someone else is holding their glass, look at how someone else is using their knife and fork. Um, so just watch um, and, and, and follow. Chief State Protocol Advisor Ambassador Eleanor Sherlock says exhibiting professionalism and personal decorum at social events will form part of how that person is perceived. Remember always, you are surrounded by others. I don't like um, when there is a lack of decorum, when you dance too close or it gets too familiar because um, the following day or thereafter you have to interact, you have to work with a person, you have to look in that person's face. Therefore, um, the level of decorum should be maintained. At a star party, some level of professionalism should still be upheld because at the end of the day, the next day or the next couple of days is work and we still need to work in the same environment. Um, as school workers and we don't want emotions and all them stuff there running up all over the place. What really upset me the most at the Christmas party is when people start to drink and them start to disbehave and them I want some look shut up things and start disbehave. It, it, it really looks bad for them. When they over drink and bouncing upon you like it is appropriate and it's not because then again you have to go back to work and work with them. They drink spill on you and mess you over and that's not nice. <laughs> Functions or parties provide excellent networking opportunities. With this in mind, patrons or party goers must be aware that a potential business partner or a prospective employer could be standing right next to you as you stagger around with a drink in hand, speak with food in your mouth, and badmouth the boss. Here are some of the most common mistakes people make. What is not yours, simply leave it alone. You will always be remembered for that outlandish outfit. Disregard the Jamaican notion of always being late. Though it's a delectable affair or there is a buffet line and an open bar, it's provided for everyone at the party. There are some things which are just not to be said. And so gossiping and speaking ill of persons, speaking ill of your colleagues, and those, those are just absolute no-no. Especially if you are in the working world, how you behave is going to dictate where you end up. It's not from where you start, but how you behave. Now that you are aware of the don'ts of party protocol, here are some pointers to ensure that you dance away from the event feeling professional and rewarded. Be informed of the company or person hosting the event. If you are a new employee, ensure that you are familiar with co-workers' posts, especially top-level members. If you are accompanying a friend to an event, do your own background research into the party hostess so you are not lost in the woods during conversations. Mix and mingle. Shed the shy girl or laid-back dude attitude and meet people. There may be a potential business partner or prospective employer inside the dance room. Walk with business cards. If you don't have the time to generate one, ensure that you have a pen and paper on you. Reputation lost is never again regained. And you one needs to have their personal dignity. And dignity comes with how you conduct yourself. And that's why I think it's important for decorum. All the people then with our Zig V, all up your hand. Zig V in the Caribbean territory, but we now want that virus take set pan we. So make sure it's send us stagnant water in sight and mash up all mosquito breed in sight. More bullets that it in them where you dash by and change the water in your vows every day. No litter, dispose of your garbage proper. You know them, they think they will turn green blacker. Tour your community and tour your yard for suppress mosquito. We have to go hard, dash with all tires.
fire turn over drum pan for prevention is the greatest weapon. And special shout out to pregnant ladies. Protect yourselves and protect your babies. Draw for your zapper and your mosquito spray. If you do all that we can, we keep them away. How in a wars in me? If you are walking on the streets and you feel like you're being followed, chances are you're being followed. So we we'll urge you to go to a crowded area where there are lots of civilians, there are security personnel, and you'll see coverage there. Um, let someone know where you're going, what time you'll get back, and how long you'll be out for. That is very important for us in order if somebody can't find you, we'll know that you went to X place or Y place. Uh, keep valuables out of sight. So we know we like to display our fancy ring or our fancy gold chain or, or our bangles, and we love jewelry. But as best as possible, we'd like for you to keep those out of sight or keep them at a minimum. Be alert at all times. That is extremely important. We know we don't want people to be walking and looking over their shoulders, but the criminals have also um, started their plan for the Christmas season. So you now need to ensure that your plan gets started and you can begin to walk and be alert. Look over your shoulder if you need to. That's all we have for you today. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Let us know what you think about today's show. Send us an email, jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. Don't forget to visit our website, jis.gov.jm, and follow us on Twitter at JIS News or like our Facebook page. On behalf of all of us here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.